Good morning, folks. This is B from Kongs R Us, and I'm back with a, another quick modding session to map my GRS yoke to my custom Star Wars playlist. And so since I have to work on this for a, a, a couple of hours, that I turn on the camera and say hello, have folks join, have a very chill stream. Hey, arcade guy. Hey, the skinny biker. Thanks for joining. Shane Christopher. <laughs> Looks like you've been working your tail off to get this finished. I, I was I was really live streaming at 3.30 a.m. Yeah, I was up last night. Uh, I'm on the West Coast until like 3 a.m. last night doing a another stream just for, and I had Mark North from Australia watching me uh, do some last minute mapping, but I was like, I couldn't sleep because I took an, a nap last night because I was super, super tired during the day. And I was like, oh man, I'm awake. It's like one o'clock. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I was streaming last night and did a stream uh, pretty late, but I'm back this morning. The kids are still sleeping. The wife is still sleeping. So I'm able to to get in here and do some work and get some mapping done. Plus you get to see some gameplay. Plus it's the only time I get to play with my playlist. So it's actually pretty cool. Hey, Rick. Hello, Facebook user. I have to kind of check the Facebook chats to see who is actually joining on Facebook because StreamYard does not let me see who you are. What's up, Endangered Dog? I've been busy, a busy bee. So we'll get straight to it. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, uh, I'll pretty much be playing uh, these games and doing some quick mapping and doing a little bit of just a walkthrough on, on what I'm doing uh, for the folks that are curious. But uh, again, this is my Launchbox playlist that I have very different several emulators. And so um, I'm going to start off with this ride and roll playlist, and we're going to be mapping Redream. So um, in the beginning, what I did was I um, had an APAC on my original Star Wars arcade um, bot that I did with the arcade one up um, yoke. And now we are just double checking the control binds for Redream. I think I already did this. It looks like I already remap these but essentially once you go into the emulator you would go to the input section map out your controls these buttons look all mapped out already joy one two three four five six joy y one two three four left trigger three one okay cool yeah i think this is already mapped so we're just going to be testing gameplay for these first couple of ones 18 wheeler crazy taxi should be pretty fun what's up kato let's do it let's play some 18 wheeler some chuck wheeler all right hopefully it's not too loud or crazy and um i'm using a capture card on my pc and i'm hoping that it doesn't go crazy on me did it go blank can you guys see the screen come on screen what happened to my capture card maybe i just have to wait for a second for it to pop back on man yesterday was super busy though i mean fridays are so packed with retro arcade content for the community. So, I mean, obviously it starts with the retro buzz for folks that caught the the, the guys there. Um, so, you know, starting at 3 p.m. my time or 6 p.m. East Coast, it's pretty much like almost like, what's four or five hours of nonstop content action. Stop so content. I was so busy following everything that was happening. Uh, blank, I love that game. First one on your racing cab list. Um, it popped up and then it just exited for some reason. Hmm, that's weird. Um, I wonder if it's because I hit the escape button. I think you just needed to think. All right, let's try it one more time. 18 Wheeler. Dreamcast is launching. But um bum. Might be because I'm thinking too hard or too much and my capture card is going crazy. Oh, but it's kind of stuck though. It's not even showing what's on the capture card right now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good arcade YouTube action, man. Hey, John, how's it going? I know folks are uh, hanging out and uh, chilling. Okay, cool. So now we have now now it's moving. Okay, so let's go ahead and press one of these buttons, and it should get us going. <laughs> B, if I'm planning to do a standard upgrade with a GRS yoke, will I need a Geek Pie? Uh, no. Like, if you haven't done your mod already with an arcade one up, like getting a GRS yoke is definitely like the easiest solution. Um, but if you've already modded your yoke or you're planning to, the Geek Pie is going to be awesome because it gives you a lot more options for adding extra buttons for emulators, uh, especially the console emulators that could really use it. So that's the biggest area that it's going to be using for. 
John says, or maybe you need some sleep. I do need some sleep. Okay. Man, this this capture card thing, I was doing this last night and it was working a lot better than it was now. Like I can't even see what's going on with my screen because I'm trying to use a capture card. Hmm. I wonder if I just log into StreamYard and I just do a uh, a share screen instead because it's is it blank for you guys? This is me having kind of like now YouTube content creator issues where I don't have my setup correctly or I have too many Wi-Fi devices in here. Like if you if I showed you kind of like what my setup is and what my room is, like you can see my face, you can see some of my background, but my floor is an absolute mess. I have like a PC right in front of me here. I got a PC here. So like, yep. um, uh, it's it's not capturing the way I want it to, the struggles of being a content creator. And so um, I've I've been learning a lot from other folks and, and hopefully I can get better, but this is not working like I want it to. Come on, capture card. I need to do with this, dance with this. Yeah. All right, if it's blank and scratchy, all right, let's just exit out of this. Exit. <clears throat> okay really scratchy maybe the wi-fi connection on this particular pc is really bad because you need to have good 5g connection let's just double check okay so what if i just remove this and i do share screen audio this way okay It's blank. It's a blank, 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 blank. Uh, Ricka says, I've been searching everywhere for Harley Davidson ROM. Jealous. Oh, I think that's a Sega Model 3 ROM. So um, hopefully you should be able to get that going. Okay. And add to stream. Is it this one? No. Okay. Cool. All right. So maybe this will be a little bit laggier. Maybe it's just the internet. Maybe it's really bad. Okay, cool. So let's try one more time. This is how I was doing it um, last week where I was just streaming and sharing screen. But then um, I figured a capture card would be a little bit faster, but it's thinking too hard. It's thinking too hard. Some 18 Wheela. So I will be looking to my left where my main screen is, but you guys will see hopefully some of the gameplay on screen be choppy, choppy, choppy. Sub Rob Young. What's happening right now is called real life. Absolutely. Like if anybody's ever modded anything, this is real life modding. You got to figure shit out because everything always doesn't work as nice and cleanly as you like it to. All right. So at least now I can see what's happening on the screen, but the streaming is just really bad. So I, I think it's just my internet, guys. Like I have really bad internet. Like I'm looking at the streamcast right now and I'm, I'm looking... I can see the game, but I don't see it streaming on the stream. Um, Sean E, what's going on? Hello, hello. Dreamcast. I feel like I can play, but nothing's happening. Ah, my screen is going out. Man, there's all sorts of things going on right now. So many issues. <laughs> for real uh any thoughts on the 99 lives pre-cut premium control panel from john uh this is this is a great option for folks that are getting my mod kit and want a pre-drilled panel um greg is sending me a couple samples of it and i have been working with him hand in hand on that because my ultimate goal is to try to get this mod in the hands of as many people as possible that want want it and maybe don't have the tools for it and so um, if you don't have like the carpentry skills to drill holes or you don't want to ruin your kind of your stock um, control panel with Plexi, um, he does this like this panel is an example of like the high quality, I forget, I forget what Greg calls it. It's like like 3M vinyl release sticker quality, but it's like you can scratch it. Like this is really great like quality printing. And then he pre-drills the holes for you through his CNC and I gave him the exact measurements of where to cut. Um, so I think it's a fantastic option for folks that want to get the mod kit. And I think ultimately down the road, you know, because uh, as much as I love providing services and commissions and, and stuff, like, um, I don't know if I could be doing this forever. So this is 
one of those things where I was thinking long term, if I set up something where I can create a kit and the panel can already be pre drilled, you know, folks can purchase it through him and get the kit through me and then, you know, be a happy marriage. Or eventually I would order stuff from him and I can pre wire kits on my spare time. Um, but that's that's the goal ultimately to to kind of you know transition back so I can do other stuff. Um, the pieces just turn off. Uh, maybe. All right. So so while I was talking, my my foot down here kicked the PC power out of my uh, PC. So I bet my launch box will have issues now. <laughs> I always tell people this, like, uh, watch your power outlets. All right. So my other PC is restarting with everything else. So I'll just talk while that's going, getting back up. Um, you, know, you just perfect and ordered one two days ago because I thought you were involved. It would be just right. Yeah. I um. Greg is has been fantastic. He's been helping me out on the side to you know make sure this is right. So uh, before he goes into production for them, like I'm gonna test a couple of the sample panels that he sent me, uh, and then get those wired up. But yeah, I I'm excited about it. It's a really cool option for folks that that don't want to cut stuff. That would have been me. I wish this option was available when I first started. But you know, it's already it's already close to March. Like it's coming up on my my one year anniversary of when I first started modding my Star Wars Arcade 1-Up cap. So for folks that like were been following me for a while and uh, you know, I did, I finished my first Raspberry Pi mod around this time last year doing my Street Fighter and team, TMNT. Like I was fairly brand new to all things uh, modding. And so for folks that are, have always asked me, what's your background? What do you do? Like what, like how do you do all this stuff? And um, I, I pretty much am, just the regular guy like you guys. I just figured it out and had a passion for stuff. And um, I remember watching a YouTube video of this guy. I think his name is Repair Salt. That was kind of what inspired me to find the APAC and see if it can work with the yoke. And so um, a lot of it was just trial and error, figuring stuff out, and it worked. All right. Um, so I restarted my PC. I hope this feels a little bit better now. OK. Go back to this setting. Okay, so we're gonna restart this again one more time. Hopefully, that's always like troubleshooting thing number one when you talk to somebody in IT troubleshooting. Did you restart your computer? Is that gonna fix everything? I should always do that and be like, yes, I restarted my computer. Yes, I restarted everything. Um, <laughs> but that's, <clears throat> hopefully this fixed everything. We're going to get it. Yes, I'm going to order one soon. Cool. What about software? We're talking about making. Um, and so uh, the software, in terms of the LaunchBox build, I do have uh, the LaunchBox build that would be available. Uh, the ROMs and everything, though, uh, publicly, they, they're not available, not something that I'm offering. But uh, if you join my Facebook group, um, I give a little bit of information on, on how you can get them. So that's just kind of the setup. But the LaunchBox build that you're looking at is something that is available as part of the kit that, that you would see. OK, we're back. All right, so let's go back to our racing ride and roll playlist and go to 18 Wheeler. Yeah, this playlist is great just because it already has some of the highlights of some best things you can play in a nice organized fashion. All right. Uh, Rick is saying, I've modded several cabs and you're now starting to dive into Star Wars yoke. Should you still use an APAC? Are you suggesting using the Geek Pie? Uh, you can go out either route. Like they both work perfectly fine. Um, the the Geek Pie is a little bit cheaper, and it's how I'm going to be doing all of my mods moving forward. So um, if you're going to start at this stage in the game, I would recommend the Geek Pie because it's a little bit cheaper and it's a little bit more versatile. And what I mean by versatile is that it's a single one player set that you can plug in. I think up to like 16 buttons and have all the accesses working too. And so uh, the problem with the APAC is that it's a it's a it's a two player chip board set. So you have to map some of the buttons to a player two control. And so what happens is when you're playing a game, um, some of the console emulators only allows you to map a one joystick. And so then some of the games you can't play. If it's an arcade game, no problem. 
but um, the actual um, console games like a Star Fox or you know something else that really requires things, it would be a little bit harder. So, all right. So let's turn up this. Barely hear the volume on this, but um, I think the stream quality is just going to be pretty bad. So apologies up front that. Now I have to work on my interwebs, or um, I have a power line going to my main PC, but now I, I got to get one to my streaming device too. All right, 18 Wheeler. Man, the struggle is real this morning. I'm already 19 minutes into my stream and I haven't even freaking started one game yet. And it's like, <laughs> I could be here all day just troubleshooting, trying to get this stream to work instead of actually doing this. I thought I'd do some content just to entertain the masses and folks that are hanging out and chilling. But you guys can't even see what's going on. I like my screen just crapped out again. Did I kick the, the PC one more time? Let me move this out of the way. There it goes. All right, shift down, go. All right, there it is. Now I can see me moving. Shift down. Shift down. This PC is struggling hard. Is it the Wi-Fi? I swear I was doing this last night at 3 a.m. and this exact same setup worked fine. <laughs> it's one of those days by the looks of it. Uh, this is the Dreamcast version, Brad. Um, it's like, it's like even my monitor is like going in and out as I play it. So like I'm playing it and it feels fine. Shift up. Okay. Chasing this guy down, but you guys can't see anything on a screen, right? It looks blank. I'm like playing it right now on my other screen. Oi. <laughs> Welcome to real world modding. It's it's so it's it's almost it's it's less real world modding and it's uh being a real world low budget YouTube guy that doesn't have the best equipment. So <laughs> I'll say that much. But uh huge props to several folks. I mean, I've I've uh you know recently been on this big kick about trying to create quality content and trying to get a better setup, multiple cameras, better microphone setup so you can hear my audio. Um, but I guess my video setting is what's really struggling today because uh, I'm trying to use a capture card with this PC as a second screen. Um, so big props to Stephen Haywood from the Tech Buzz. He's given me some lot of good advice. Um, I've talked with Retro Ralph. He's been really kind to me and telling me a little bit about his setup as well. Um, so uh, you know, I, I learned from, from watching all those other content creators. And, and seeing how they produce quality streams. Don't have that nice fancy DSLR right here that has the faded background like Ralph does. But, um, and then Stephen Hayward's uh, uh, equipment, oh my God, on the Tech Buzz is out of this world, but he does professional broadcasting. So <laughs> anybody who follows uh, the Tech Buzz should realize that he doesn't have all that equipment just for YouTube. He's actually a professional and he does some awesome stuff. So he's been really great uh, mentor and showing me stuff too. <laughs> Um, I'm going to check my internet settings here again one more time. Try to enter this broadcast studio. If I, if this doesn't work for one last time, then um, I may just chat with you guys and hang out unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about. But um, I'm, I'm struggling. I got to check my internet. Go to internet speed test and just check um, my speed. I did upgrade my speed recently because I, I was on, I think, AT&T, which uh, limited my max upload speed at like 45 megabytes. And then I switched over to Spectrum to a gig plan. So technically, if I'm like at my my closest router, it can run at 900 gigabytes, uh, you know, uh, download speed and then upload speed is, you know, really high. Um, but I get throttled and, and, and that speed drops. And so I think, I think this PC is just having... Um, internet issues. I wonder if I connected to a different Wi-Fi adapter, it would be much better. Because literally, I was I was here last night doing it, and it was fine. Uh, look at this internet speed test. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm sh I'm showing my. I'm trying to run an internet speed test now. Look, look, it's struggling. My download speed is 0.59 megabytes. Do you see that? Holy shit, no wonder I'm having issues. But my regular stream is fine right now. Look at that. That's the sad, that's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Can you see that? It says 0.59 megabytes per second download speed and 1.52 1, 1. upload speed. 
<laughs> oh my god, I'm just laughing. And this is this is supposed to be a 5G Wi-Fi signal right now. That's that I'm that I'm using. <laughs> Oh my god, that's hilarious! No wonder I'm struggling so bad. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe that's an error. Let me try running it one more game at a time. This is this is a uh, this is actually pretty funny. Uh, um, but I, I I have to be running at a decent speed for you guys to be hearing me on my my other one. I'm using a Powerline modem on um on my other one. So, so yeah, it's the struggle is real. That that that's hardcore struggling. My goodness, wireless is not good for gaming. It's not good for YouTubing either. <laughs> oh man, I'm just checking checking some chat. Saturday morning struggles. Um, I'm just curious now. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna remove the side cam because that's been really hard and struggling. Let me share this screen. All right, so I'm gonna share here. And we're gonna run a speed test. See, look. So my main my main PC is like way over like 136 megs, but I'm I'm hooked into a power line. So this is fine. You can see me. You can hear me. Okay. The upload speed is not the best, but you know, for for a live stream at 33 megs per second, it's the Wi-Fi. It's got it's the Wi-Fi adapter and card. All right. Look at that. Okay. So it's not my internet. It's something to do with the PC. Isn't that crazy? Stop sharing your screen. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. The other one, it's it froze again. Like I'm I'm trying to to stream it and the the whole thing just froze. God. Uh, man, maybe maybe if I connect to the non 5G network, it's more stable, right? But then I don't know if I can stream that well. Let's try connecting to the regular non 5G band and see if that works. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be on all these things, but uh, I know that eventually I was trying to expand the signal range of my house and I was like adding multiple routers. And it's like, oh, like originally when my brother-in-law helped me set up stuff, he set up like the same brand signal everywhere. But now that I'm streaming and doing stuff, I needed to differentiate them. But like the regular 2.4 gigahertz band is supposed to be more stable, but it's uh, not as not as fast. All right, and now it's saying no internet settings at all. It's it's done. It's done, Zos. <laughs> all right, let me check chat and see if I have any questions in here just to answer and see what's going on first. Um, so Brad is asking, uh, do, have a, do I have an opinion on Rage of Dragons and is it worth getting? Uh, so the only game I purchased on the IR arcade so far has been Dragon's Lair 2. So for me personally, like I, I think the build quality of the IR arcade is great. I think the app store for me personally, I'm kind of waiting to, uh, you know, see other games that I'm not able to play on other platforms that are like really dedicated to IR arcade. So, and so I might be one of those that just gets the heavy hitters of, you know, the main titles on the IR arcade, um, because I thought the 11 games on its stock were, were pretty decent for a range of things. Um, but in terms of like buying individual games on the app store, one, I had a, a pretty fairly bad app store experience with IR Arcade. So I'm hoping that improves because I think there's potential there. Um, but the user interface isn't that friendly. And there's a lot of like, especially for new folks. Um, I'm, I was even thinking about doing content for it because I know folks that, that struggle with the IR Arcade and they get it new and there's device one, device two. There's not a lot of like, like formal resources on screen sharing how it's done and and as far as i've seen like you know i've seen the community really helping each other out i see jeff rainwater sending people his video of him walking <laughs> in the forest giving instructions and i've i've asked him do you have a formal video of you kind of like sitting down in front of something um but he keeps it he says that it's going to be obsolete soon once an update comes so maybe jong and the update will release it but i have a lot of thoughts about the ir kate app store um so if i do a review which some of you guys maybe saw my teaser i I had a teaser video of Mrs. Kong's arrest potentially involved in an II arcade review <laughs> on my Facebook community post. Uh, and so I'll be talking a lot about kind of the room for improvement there. So I don't have an opinion on Rage of Dragons yet because I don't have it. Saturday morning struggles. Tony says he just ordered a newish Pandora bo box uh, with lots of games. Don't see any good reviews on it. Might replace your 61. Yeah, I don't, I've never used a Pandora box, but I mean, those are great multi cades like, you know, easy out of the box stuff. Uh, Rick says the Naomi version is good, but the Dream Press isn't much different. You're correct. DIY arcades always work perfectly until you have company or kids play them. Yeah. <laughs> or you try to have a live stream where you have 15 people hanging out with you and uh, you're trying to get it to work. Um, 
Oh my good. I had the perfect launch box build and then family came over, broke it. You had to delete it. No, the Gweet says your your family broke your launch box build. How? <laughs> That's horrible news. I mean, like, yeah, um, I I I do know that for folks that that use my setup, I um, try to tell folks to use an inlet power module switch so that you can power everything off. But with great power comes great responsibility. Was it? responsibility because a lot of folks that have family will just shut the power off like all their other archie went ups but that can corrupt your launch box build and so i've had to put a lot of instructions on how to correct the launch box build all right so um i connected back to regular internet let's let's cancel this try to run a speed test one more time oh look guys i don't have 0.59 connection anymore i'm 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 sad oh god it's struggling you see that it's it started it started going up to twenty and now it's going back down. Oh my god, the struggle is real with this PC. You can't even see it. It's it's stuck, but it, it says twenty on the screen, but then it went back down to two point nine eight megabytes like download, and it's not even doing the upload one. It's like all right, maybe I gotta change the Wi-Fi adapter on this PC. That's what it is. <laughs> oh my goodness, wireless streaming. It only works at three a.m. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is true, Kato. I was doing this at 3 a.m. when nobody else was on, on the block was using their internet. And uh, that's why. Time to throw the PC in the trash. My goodness, I know. <laughs> the PC is trash. Oh my goodness. All right, Brett says, I like Marvel vs. Capcom too. Just never got into Neo Geo Fighters as much. I know John gives us no options for setting control mapping or turning off fixing spoons, so rage concerns. Ah, it's true. There's so many different types of fighting games. Um, yeah, especially those types of games that are like um, I have my uh, my Neo Geo MBSX too, and uh, there's a ton of like art of fighting games and things that I really like to play back in the day. But I've I I've always been more of a Capcom fighter guy, and I play my Marvel versus Capcom cab every day. Like that's my number one cab. So if anybody ever wants to fight me on the Marvel versus Capcom arcade one up online forums or not forums the danger room come find me i am ranked like number 70 out of i don't know how many people have the cab but i'm in the top 100 woohoo um i'm level like 10 right now and so i have about about i'm about a 500 player i have about 300 wins and about 300 losses but like i am a marvel versus capcom guy the dl2 uh, overloaded their servers correct yeah so i had a pretty bad experience there but i'm hoping it gets better so um, let me let me do one thing. I'm gonna switch out the actual Wi-Fi card on my PC to something brand like a different one to see if that fixes it. So, all right. So let's unplug. This is this is normally the Wi-Fi adapter that I recommend and use because it's like plug and play out of the box, pretty decent, uh, and it works great. But I don't I don't know because I have my my power line set up in here. I have a brand new one. Let's let's see if it's a hardware issue. Like if you're troubleshooting. It's like, is it is it software related? Is it PC related? I don't know if there's any settings that are like preventing it from from connecting well. Let's see if it's actually the Wi-Fi adapter. We'll get a brand new one. This is an EDUP Wi-Fi adapter. There's many ones that that are out there, but I've I've used these in a lot of my builds because it's um it's one of the ones that's truly plug and play. Like it gives you. <laughs> This is funny to me because there's not a lot of like DVD players out there, but it still gives you one of these like mini mini CDs that has the drivers on it. Um, and it's really funny. And, and, it, and it comes in this like really fancy like foam packaging. Like, I don't know why, but I, I save this shit in case I need to use it for something else. Like if I need to like pad something else. Um, so it's, it's pretty decent quality, but once you plug it in, it automatically recognizes it as a Wi-Fi device. And it works. Um, other ones, you do have to install drivers, but this is the one that I recommend. So we'll test, we'll see. And then I'm going to plug it into, I'm going to try plugging it into a USB 3.0 port. Let's see if that helps too. All right, so got the capture card here. Got this here. All right, let's, let's test, see if it's the hardware. All right. See if there's anything else. Uh, what are your thoughts, John Williams, on the Logitech G920 wheel? Uh, G920, G29 wheels, um, I don't have one specifically. I have a PS3 Logitech wheel um, that's similar, like an older model, but not quite the same. Um, so uh, I, I know that folks have have recommended it for their driving builds, but I can tell you this, even even when I did my OutRun mod with my PS3 wheel, it 
has um it's it's a lot of work mapping out the g29 wheel to get it working like 100 with force feedback and all that stuff so like if you wanted to just play it and like not have that force feedback and just kind of have like um like it, it not if you just want to play it without the force feedback, I mean, like you can plug it in, map the controls. Uh, that's that's way easier. Um, but getting the force feedback plugin to work as as kind of what that's designed for is way more intense and um, difficult than I thought. So if people have been asking me like, hey, can your playlist do be good for a PC racing wheel? I'm like, yes, but it's not going to be as plug and play like it's the APAC or the yoke. Like you can't, can't expect it to be working right out the box um, because it, the, and, I, and I think the difference between the G920 wheel and the G29 wheel is one of them is an Xbox wheel. One of them is for like the Sony other ones. Uh, just be careful if you're trying to get one because the, I believe the Xbox one, even though it's Xbox, it doesn't work with the PC and has issues with it being recognized. So um, I think it's the G29 wheel that you want, not the G920, but don't quote me on that because I, I remember doing research on that. All right, I'm back. Let's... Um, I'm gonna try this one more time. I reconnected my PC. So now, now, now this has become, instead of a GRS yoke gameplay, it's become the troubleshoot YouTube with B for 30 minutes before you can actually do anything. All right, I have my card up here. Let's go to internet speed. We're gonna run this speed test one more time. Look guys, it was a card, I think, but even 25, even 25 megabytes per like uh, download isn't fantastic, but at least it's more steady than this other card. But I don't know. Don't know what it is. All right. So, okay, download speed was 24. Upload speed is 38. Okay, so I think it's better. <laughs> That's much better. I think I think we can try it. We can try this. All right. Um, just checking out with the rest of the chat what's going on. Uh, you got a Star Wars arcade, dreaming one day of modding it. Brad, you have to do it. If you're a fan, it's it's one of the best mods you can do. It's really awesome. All right, it took months to put it back together. Oh no, so Gweet, when you did your launch box build? Yeah, it, it, it takes a while for sure. Uh, you like vertical jammer boards as you just shut them off. No pie shut down needed. That's that's true. I need I need to get into a jam and do 16 one too. I need to expand my, my modding games. Oh, <laughs> hey, it's uh, I think it's Sam, Miola. Arrows or no arrows, you are worthy on DL2 despite. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I I share the top spot right now with Prentice uh, on down Dragon's Lair 2. I did a, a stream about it, but um, I'm proud to be number two behind him. That's pretty cool. I got I have a top score on Dragon's Lair 2. We were talking about like maybe the, the IRK leaderboards can give you more options to show people that use a little bit of help or not. Okay. But now I'm excited. Okay. Now that my stream thing is, is better and let's go back to this mode, go back to my launch box list. Let's actually try this one more time. Try it out. Yay. It looks like it's actually working. <laughs> All right. Uh, should go internal B, uh, Oh, for like a uh, Wi-Fi? Yeah, probably should. Um, and actually disconnect it. I just don't have, um, I need to put another router in here if I need to do wired connections. So I might do that and just get wired connections for all the streaming devices in my room. Cool. Uh, Brattle kind of says, I kind of like it so far. What are you liking so far? So good for my opinion of the IR arcade. I mainly got it for Dragon's Lair trilogy games. Shooters on it are fun too. I agree. Like overall, like I think it's a solid quality build. Um, but again, you know, I think the biggest knock on it has been the app store. And and the UI experience for me has, has been less than stellar, but I know they're new. I should give them more slack for it. But um, I think for me, user interface is is really key. That experience, like you can see it and hear it, but if, if it's not intuitive enough for you to kind of like find instructions on your own, then that's where I have kind of issues with it from a UI experience standpoint. Okay, I have stuff like this too. I says I'm a hoarder. It comes in handy. You just never know when you need something. This is true. I'm a hoarder. Oh my god! I'm, should I show you the rest of my room? Look, look at the rest of my room this way. See all those boxes? Isn't that horrible? <laughs> my my house is just full of boxes. All right, here we go. Asphalt cowboy. 
All right, Joel says, I arcade is build, has good customer service. I did upgrade the springs, put on an oversized actuator, did that for all my systems and makes a difference for games like Pac-Man. Very cool. But you just uh, voided your warranty. I've, I've heard about changing out your buttons. <laughs> all right. All right, Bobby wastes nothing. Which Bobby are you talking about? There's a lot of Bobbies out there. Ready? Go! All right, this is my gas button. Move in. Oh, I turned it into reverse gear. I don't want that. Okay, go back to high. Shift down. All right, so that's my shift. All right, I'm really just trying this to see if the controls are working well, but they seem to be good. And this game plays really well in the Dreamcast too. Like the the graphics of it work really well. And I know that folks said like um, the Naomi arcade version may not have a big difference. Oh, this capture card is struggling too. Did you see that? It just blanked out on me too. Ugh, what's wrong? It's it's struggling again. Oh, it's not it's not meant to be guys <laughs> i can't play this game and chat with you guys at the same time it's like giving me hardcore issues oh there it goes i don't i don't understand why my capture card has is like dependent on maybe it's just my pc that's struggling i have a i think a gtx 1650 in here maybe 1050 ti and I have two uh, HDMI outs, and uh, I'm totally going the wrong way. <laughs> oh man, this is a fun game. All right, I'm I'm done with this game. I'm done with it. I mean, maybe it's just struggling when I'm trying to do like fancy games. All right, Brad is same here. Uh, I announce, if announce if our A Club or Lance. Oh, if RK went up and announced Dragons Lair first, you wouldn't even have an IR Arcade. I'm kind of in that same boat. Like when I saw the IR Arcade Dragons Lair set up, like we didn't know that there'd be a Dragons Lair version of Arcade One Up, but um, I'm still glad I have it. I think it adds a little bit of variety to my arcade to have it. I might get the Spaces version of the game though. All right, let's try Crazy Taxi. Gosh, 40 minutes into the stream and I've played one game. And I have probably about another, like, I have about another 45 minutes to get to this. If I average one game every 40 minutes and I have about uh, 100 games to get through, how long do you think it's going to take me to get through this playlist? I can't do the math in my head, but it's a long time. <laughs> All right. Bobby Vu, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Vu. My boy, I need to go talk to him too. All right. That says, I'm so scared. It looks hard modding the Star Wars or do you sell your services? Um, yeah, if you if you want to learn more about modding your Star Wars cab, check the description of this video. And um, I have um, I have a Facebook group that's dedicated to modding your Star Wars. And I do offer some mod kits um, that have a, has all the stuff. Um, even Greg Zaker for 99 Lives um, has a, uh, a pre-cut board that you can buy too so it's almost like a replacement board so yeah there we go crazy taxi so i have it where i set these as my drive button here we go you can't have a driving arcade without race crazy taxi right oh i'm so bad <laughs> Uh, part, part of it is that the um, the base right now isn't secured down into anything. And so it's kind of like shaking as I turn the yoke pretty hard. So it's it's not the gameplay. It's it's not it's not anything to do with that. It's just me. All right, let's stop here. Get it back up. There it is. All right, let's see if we can do one more and then we'll try the next one. Crazy. Literally, this is the only time I get to play my games. Let's go. And so for most of my games, I usually have the um, the top buttons as, as gas and brake. But for this one, the bottom triggers are gas and brake because I set these bottom triggers to be like um, R1 and R2. Oh, I'm so bad. All right, I'm going the wrong way. All right, I'm going to turn it off and try Crazy Taxi 2 now. <laughs> All right, that's that. Let's, let's do the next one. We're, we're testing games right now. We're trying to get through as many as we can. All right, so we did Crazy Taxi 1. Let's check Crazy Taxi 2. Make sure it's good. All right. All 
All right. Thanks for joining, Rob. Appreciate you joining in. Sorry, having issues and still fun. <laughs> yes, I appreciate everybody that's just hanging out and chilling. If you guys have anything that happened on your Saturday morning. So um, it's cool to just while I'm doing this, you're sharing my 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 issues. But I don't I don't think this would be happening if I wasn't trying to stream it at the same time, though. So I probably would be more effective if I didn't stream this. We're but what's back. what's it's the great. fun in that if I have to be working? Get it going. Go ahead and slash. Let's go slash. <clears throat> -dum -bum -bum. -dum -bum. All right, this is much better now. We are getting there. Last night I did my um, ride and shoot playlist. Here we go. So the cool thing about doing this is I I get to rediscover games, which is cool. The arrow tricked me. Right. There it is. Taxi. There it is. Woohoo, we got one. All right, let's stop at this guy. He's a green guy. I'm sure there's like crazy strategy like strategies, right? Uh, that's reverse. Okay, stop him. I'm trying to pick up a customer. All right. That's drive. Stop. Okay. Hold tight. I got 70 seconds. Let's go. I'm totally <laughs> uh, going the wrong way again. This is terrible. I didn't say this is going to be good gameplay, by the way. I just wanted to test the controls and see how well I would do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see if we can get there. Ugh. Here it is. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Almost fell over the edge. <laughs> oh, I fell off. All right, it's over. It's over. I'm done. Terrible. That was terrible. That was the worst. All right, let's try it. Um, I already did this game, I think, because it was a Sega Model 3 game. So let's do Paperboy. Let's play some Paperboy. That's why I did this playlist, because there's the announcement of the MK. Um, yeah, I think the music is from Offspring on both games. But um, the Paperboy announcement for the Midway Legacy cab, guys. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it because, I mean, obviously you can play Paperboy on a yoke as a much better experience versus just playing it on a joystick, trying to make like a console cade. So it's really curious that they included that on there. Not sure quite how I feel about it. So let me just remap my buttons for Paperboy. And I'm going to check my analog settings for this too. So I think this game, I have it at five for everything. Okay, let's see if that actually is good. Enter some coins. You can see how how good my Paperboy game is. I should, if only I can get this to like stabilize so it doesn't shift while I'm playing too. That's what I need to do. I need to mount this down. All right, turn to handlebar to choose route. We're gonna do easy street. Okay. I think there's like some calibration that you need to do when you first start playing the game. So hopefully it won't go crazy on me. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I crashed already. Paperboy is a hard game to control, but I mean, at least with the yoke, it's pretty fun. So you move forward to go faster and backwards. So I think this, if Brad, if, if you want a true Paperboy experience on your Star Wars yoke, I mean... This this is gonna be it. I don't think you'll get anything that's as close to to this on an arcade one up. This is the true way you should be playing Paperboy. Yes, look at that. Oh gosh, I just crashed into that thing. <laughs> Paperboy needs the handlebar controller. All right, let's see how I can go. And go 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 go. All right, Whew. all right, all right. Got an extra paper. Yeah, the controls. I feel like the controls are pretty good. I've I've played this a couple of times on playlist but i think i've gotten it pretty set pretty good all right oh let's get the burglar right nope 
right in the mailbox. Do 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 do. Get those guys. All right, here we go. Obstacle course. Do do do. Do 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 do. Yeah, I can't imagine playing this all with a joystick and button. Like I don't know, it's just it wouldn't be as fun, right? Like joystick and button on Paperboy. Like playing the like the analog settings you need to play the game. Here's here's where my biggest issue would be with with playing it with a joystick and a button. It's because uh, you know a regular traditional joystick is a digital eight way stick. But in order to like really be set, like look at the sensitivity controls. Like I can I can register the analog settings by speeding up and then slowing down as I need to to be as accurate when you're playing the game. If this was just a uh, an eight way joystick, then you would be pressing up to go forward, and it would just be like full speed back, full speed back. There wouldn't be this like nice range of motion that you get when you're playing with the true. Um, handlebar and and setting because like now i have like absolute complete control of the bike and like it's just way way easier to control so i mean i think it's cool that they added it but that like the control is obviously their biggest concern but it's it's not that it's just it's it's the analog settings that you need to get that range of motion for a game like this playing any game that require like that has an analog setting but is using a digital signal like you can tell the difference on obviously the gameplay or whatnot all right, I'm actually this is like the best that I've played. So this maybe this is good that I'm having you guys watch me. You guys can see me play Paperboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more. Oh, I missed. Yeah, I actually made it to the end of the course twice on the same route. I want to keep playing. <laughs> George A is here. Um. Oh, so yeah, you're trying to say it. Like Kato said, try playing Paperboy with a joystick and it's so terrible. Uh, same. I've tried it on a modded cab and it's way too hard. It doesn't even work. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, if you have this on a multi cade and just a regular joystick, like, if you guys, once you guys get the Star Wars mod, like, look, this, this is a pretty fun way to play, obviously, because you can. Um, and George, I think the original, I don't know if the Atari handlebar was based on, or the handlebar was based on a yoke, but it's the same principle because you can, I think you can still turn it and then press the button. Um, so all of those analog controllers use kind of a similar setting. All right, that's enough Paperboy fun, but I wanted to play it so you guys can see the better way to play. <clears throat> A1UP is making a lot of mistakes lately. I, I would say yes and no, right? Like, um, you know, the announcements of CES cabs were were hype when they came out. And now, like, it's been a little while, so they're losing their luster for other announcements and things. You know, the PR um, madness of, of, of announcing things and kind of teasing things, I think, has gotten fans, uh, you know, a little bit on different sides of the fence. And um, I think the biggest thing that they're missing with some of the legacy cabs if for me, and I, I know John D said it, that was really hard to do, but it's the the online play aspect of some of these games that was really going to bring the value to it. Like having online play for Marvel versus Capcom was like a game changer, NBA Jam. Like they need more online cabs that have some of that connectivity because they're selling enough units that, that really, um, you know, would bring the value to it to like have OG Street Fighter set up mk2 live with like not even like all the games like i was hoping for like a dedicated mk2 live version with like not having all those games more than i would than the midway legacy with like 12 games that you know i may or may not play like there's there's a decent list on there um same thing with the the capcom legacy one right um so that's kind of like oh, I, I, it's missing that live feature and if they were gonna redo it like uh, we're doing Road Rash on a PS1. I think this is a game that one of my clients had asked me to add on there, so I was just adding it to test it out. But it's a pretty, pretty cool game. Plays pretty well. Yeah. All right, I'm going to totally crash into somebody. Boom! This is Road Rash on the PS1. I was doing a lot of like racing classic games yesterday, so there's a couple of good race racing games. Is that a piece? Oh, I just I just punched a cop. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
uh, uh, once I eat it, I'll I'll stop playing. Move to the next one. All right, this is that's pretty fun. That's pretty cool. But yeah, so in terms of mistakes, though, like it's I think there's maybe not mistakes. I would say about a one up. I think it's more like missed opportunities. I think that's the biggest concern that I have for that group. Um, Brad is saying having done a lot of DIY arcade and several very good multi kites it's hard to buy a one ups with just a few games on them the star wars is great because of the unique controls and art yeah like the unique controls like i'm looking for games from arcade one up that that are better because of the unique controls more than kind of like their standard layup and setup so that's why before i got my outrun cab last year i really only had like three arcade one ups and it wasn't until they announced outrun um, and then pinball that I got and Marvel vs. Capcom because it had online play and Big Buck Hunter. So like I I jump immediately at cabs that have unique controls. And so because an arcade isn't just about a six button experience you can do on a multi cable with everything else, like you said, it's about having the unique way to play them. Like my dual stick mod behind me, like that's pretty badass. I should I should do more gameplay of that because that was I I finished that before I got a little bit more popular on YouTube. But like I I have two. Uh, uh, flight stick thrust master flight sticks to play like virtual on and tank games and stuff on that that mod um so that was pretty cool so i kind of gravitate to more unique controls scooper ski gt i think i already did this one on mod oh this is a model 2 game oh yeah so we do need to do do some model 2 games all right so for model 2 we have to auto switch to full screen take that off and then we're going to load up super ski sega ski gt um i hate how this list is not in alphabetical order sega c super cg okay cool so now that it's loaded here we can go to the game settings configure controls sega model 2 is a little bit funky like that and then we're going to change these buttons here so left and right and then zoom in zoom out select one two three four one two three Okay, let's do this as zoom in, let's zoom out, select one, two, and then maybe three. Oh, this is coin. Oh, maybe this is start. Okay. Okay, let's see if this will work. Video back to full screen. Let's go. All right. I just want a blank A1 up cap to mod myself and buy the art that I want. <laughs> just that I know there's been some folks that have like, we're, we're hoping that they would move that direction. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard for a company to kind of be just in a DIY space, right? That's what Micro Center does, right? They have blank cabs, three quarter scale cabs that you can build your own self. Um, but the form factor of the arcade one up, Maybe that's people are just interested in in that. Oh, all right. So here's moving left and right. So yeah, look on your yoke. You can play ski games too. You don't have to just play um, uh, racing games too. So I think that's pretty cool because I mean the analog settings on here just really work well for games like this too. So I thought that was kind of fun. I have like a variety of games. I have a skateboarding game on here too. So this is like. When you're when you're putting together a playlist right like a lot of times people will have like a driving playlist and then there's games like this where it's like it's not really like a driving or a racing game like but you kind of sometimes see it on here so when i was creating my playlist and i needed different titles for stuff i was like what would i call a playlist that has like sega or like skiing games or like a skateboard game where you're kind of racing or even like um even like wave racers like jet skis like like those are racing games but they're not like a driving game which you would see like on a play like a playlist with like a wheel or something so um that's why i have all those games on what i call ride and roll all right that was fun that was cool all right george a need more online cabs for sure all right oh let me change this Okay, cool. So that was Sega Ski. Sega Water Ski is a Model 2 game as well. So we'll run this one. 
um, online is a must. You ordered Attack from Mars and Tempest from A One Up. Oh, I was, I was almost about to get the Tempest cab, the Atari Twelve and One, just because it looked amazing. But the controls were, I mean, it was it would be more for looks than it would be for anything. And um, I, I maybe I'm not as much of a classic gamer because I so I'm I was born in 1983, so um you know i didn't i didn't i wasn't in the heyday of like those types of classic arcades but you know i think i think the early 90s games were kind of my sweet spot when everything was going on and, and i got into arcades because my mom and dad used to own a uh, a video store a mom and pop video store and um we had an arcade operator that have four arcades they would switch out every couple of months and i would get to play free games i would just mark the coins with a little black marker and the operator would know that it was uh, our a shop that was playing the games and so i got to play arcades all the time um but I, the tempest cab like looks so great um so i wanted to I, I i wanted to get it just for the looks of it but i don't have like a huge attachment to those games so that's i was on the fence for that one so i think out of the new ces cabs that came out i'm probably gonna get the killer instinct cab because i i played a ton of killer instinct probably more on the snes than i did in the arcade um because yeah, I just remember playing a lot on the SNES with my neighbors and things. So maybe I'm more attached to that version than I am. Um, but having the arcade version is awesome too. Um, so I'm probably going to get that. I was almost going to get the X-Men cab, but I don't know. Like I already had the TMNT cab that I also already play X-Men on it. I saw somebody's mod the other day on Facebook where they did a combo TMNT on one half and X-Men on the other. And I was like, that's bloody brilliant. If you have two cabs that you're you want to have in your house that kind of do the same thing almost might as well like if you mod a team in tier if you mod a, an x-men they pretty much play the same game so it's four player beat em ups um so it's it's pretty much a clone cap but the shape and the form factor of the x-men looks freaking awesome so um i don't know i'm on the fence for that one and then i think i might get a space ace again i already have dragons there i don't need it but the space ace look looks really good so those are those are probably my buys that i'm gonna get um See, George A says, need some shooters like Ikari Warriors. Oh, I don't know if I have Ikari Warriors on this cab. So I'm not sure of how that would play because I think you need a dial set up for that game. I might have to look into that. Uh, am I happy with the Star Wars pin? Um, yes and no. I think the... Uh, I haven't done my full review yet on Star Wars pinball, but the the pinball machine like is is great for a build. Like I, I have had zero experience with an actual v pen build and so this was my first so i had you know lofty expectations more because it was my first one and i didn't know what to expect and the form factor of having it in front of me i knew the specs about the 720p i saw the original concerns from like other things um i've i've played fx3 on my pc before and so i think it was just my initial like gut reaction of seeing the screen quality compared to the one that was on the screen that I had modded uh, was 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 the biggest letdown for me and I, I i have to get over the fact that i probably should have lowered my expectations more because it's a great price point for the build quality of everything they put together in that package um and so my statement with the v pin build is almost like it's it's I kind of I kind of said this a couple of times that it's it's more for casual V pin fans that are happen to be Star Wars fans because it's not a traditional pinball table, and I don't know where I fall in that. I think I fall somewhat in the the casual pinball player as well, but I it's hard for me because I've experienced better of the exact same tables. So like if you've ex already experienced something once and then you see a different version of it that isn't as good that's where your expectations are like, wow, that's different. But if this is the first time you've ever played VPN and it's the first time you've ever played any of the Steam games, I think those people will be absolutely happy. Like, I think, you know, it's like ignorance is bliss. Like if you don't know any better and and that's, uh, you know, part of the nostalgia factor of playing these games and things, like I think it's going to be great for that market and that segment that sees it, wants to pick it up. Our Star Wars fans are like, this is awesome. It's 10 games. It's already prepackaged. It looks fantastic and beautiful. Um, but, you know, me, the modder, the tinkerer, the person that kind of knows a little bit more about it. And then that's why all the VPN folks that may have seen it, uh, you know, straight away from it so I, it just kind of depends those are my biggest thoughts on on star wars pinball all right um trying to just get the other questions in here in the chat um ancient 61 board has any games that the everyone factory something's wrong with that they're too stingy with games agree tony mvsx has 50 come on now that's true licensing is a big deal licensing is a big deal so i mean uh i'm sure they want to try to get as many of the same 
groups together but it, it's it's weird how like you know the multi cade like at games legends has 300 licensed games on it and they all kind of like live together and are happy but i think it comes with the artwork though like you can, like if you have a, a standard multi cade that's fine but since a dedicated cab needs artwork that which top game are you going to put there like neo geo was a ri the original multi cade right that's why it can have 50 games because it's neo geo um but um a regular arcade one up that's artwork and, and everything you kind of have to play with 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 the game so i kind of see that um, i want a pure shooter cab i have plans for like uncab that's part of my my next steps i'm talking and i'm not actually doing what i said i was going to do which is play the model 2 games um but yeah i i have a planned shooter cab that i'm working with bobby vu with and uh it should be pretty freaking awesome i'm um i'm really excited the theme of it i will just uh, you know i don't know who's going to be watching this and seeing it later on but i'm going to be doing a point blank theme like shooters in uh, back when i had my video store were, were pretty popular and i got to play a lot of different versions of shooter games from i think police trainer Point Blank were my favorite. So, I mean, I got really good at those shooter games. So Point Blank is like one of my absolute favorite games. So that's that's what my shooter cab is going to be. So I'm going to have a dedicated shooter cab for Point Blank. All right, set pitch left, right. All right, so pitch left is this button. Pitch right is here. We're going to do um, set. We're going to make that button set, start and then coin i think that's all i need all right let's try it out switch to full screen let's go this is a sega ski game all right operation wolf cab Ooh, fun 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 pew 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 all right takuto we're gonna be doing some water skiing i agree b whatever you agree with i agree back with you yeah Woohoo! All right. Water skiing. See, this is this is fun. You can uh you can water ski with your yoke too. Up. Uh I feel like I need to be doing something else. Up. Oops, I missed the buoy. All right. These are fun arcade games. Like, you know, I'm I'm definitely getting more into like even though multi cades with consoles are cool, I almost want to do a version of my playlist that's like purely just arcade games. So, like being able to get in and out of an arcade game, like just press start and then like automatically play without having to learn how to play a game is is the beauty and brilliance of arcades. And so sometimes when I have a multi cade and it has console stuff on it, um waiting for the concert emulators to like load up. That's always like a bummer. So I like to get in and out once I can. I love to get in and out. <laughs> uh, in and out, oh, that sounds good right now, actually. Kind of hungry. Up so late last night. Okay, cool. So that's Sega Ski Kichi. Ooh, Simpsons Road Rage, that's a fun game. Let's play that one. All right, let's check the chat. All right, Operation Wolf on Alien Coin Ops is good with the trackball, works pretty well. Reviews of RK went up pins have not been overwhelmingly positive. My at games is on the way. I do love Attack from Mars. Um, I ordered the Legends pinball, so I'm excited to get it. So uh, I don't know. I, I think the I think RK went up just has to know who their market is and what the, what there is. I think the diehards may like me maybe a little bit wishy-washy on it so that's just me you like coin ops x and to spend 73 dollars with shipping for zabos Ooh, yeah zabos does good stuff all right i hear you tony okay i'm trying to look through this here would you say that your biggest surprise um add to the starcade game list what would you say was your biggest surprise like you're going to surprise how fun it was playing the yoke setup oh that's a really good question john in terms of like my favorite game on the playlist um that's hard like i don't know like um that's a really good question um i mean obviously the star wars cat games were were a given right i think a lot of the shooters i mean i was surprised how well some of the shooters played especially like order games like virtual cop um uh, like these are really fun on the on on the yoke like i think the yoke like as a shooter cab 
is is really underrated. So I think that's really fun. Um, but I actually one of my favorite games playing on here is um the original Star Fox 64 on Nintendo 64. Like this, this is actually super fun to play. So I'm actually, I think my controls are already mapped for it, but playing Star Fox 64 on a yoke was was brilliant. I don't know, because you know you only played it on a controller back in the day, but net, like having it feel like you're actually flying something was pretty cool. So check this out. This is probably like one of my favorites of like, because I, I played a ton of Star Fox 64 and it's really fun to play. Do I have to sit through this? Okay, no, here we go. And you can hold the button to charge and I think it'll be a little bit better with more buttons actually, because I can't do, I can't do like the full U-turn and the loop-de-loops because I don't have limited buttons. But like in terms of like just playing it left and right as a shooter it's it's pretty damn fun it almost feels like you would be playing rogue squadron or something too so this is actually probably one of my favorite surprises uh, i have to sit here and watch this animation so while this is loading let's check out what else we got i like the old artari games with the of them. so what i'm waiting for we don't have much of our arcades ki will be amazing if they get the emulation right PC in a track mode can do KI, yes. Does the nudge work well in the A1 up? Nudge does not work well. You have to really hit it hard. And I don't see, I don't notice it as much unless I'm captured the ball. All right. Um, Secretly have been upgrading the kids' gaming computer. So when I replace it in a year, I can build a super emulation. That's brilliant, Tony. If you can do that, that's brilliant. Upgrade your kids' stuff and then steal it later. Great answer, B. Uh, I don't remember what I answered. I'm sorry, I'm behind on chat. <laughs> Okay, I uh, would like to see Road Blasters. Okay, yeah, I, I can do some Road Blasters. I did that last night, but it's okay. Everyone in the community loves talking to you, B. We love hearing commentary and insights on things. Oh, cool, thank you, appreciate that. All right, cool. So check this out. Look, this is, this. the, the yoke plays so well with this game. It's so surprising. Like this game, you have to hold onto like your trigger button to like charge up and then boom. Flippy, walk out. Flippy, walk out. And so I have my my bottom right trigger set to the gun, and then this top right button is my bomb. So I can let me bomb something really fast. Come here, bomb, boom. And then I have uh, these buttons as left and right. Um, I might need to change that. And then I think my my boost buttons are my button five and six that I have right now. So if I needed to boost, I have to push these buttons down here. So this is this is like my surprise sleeper hit on if you haven't played it and you have the Star Wars yoke, this game is really fun to play with the yoke. Like it just handles really, really well, like way more than I thought it would. Plus, this is like uh N6 this is running N64 uh through Dolphin. Use the break. Alright, there's my break. I'm just gonna like play this game because it's so much fun. But I'm not not doing great. I I used to play this game so much that like I was like obsessed with getting like the 100 per, like 100 percent um, kill rates for everything. I'll take this. Get the I'll one take this one. Me. Get the one behind me. Oh, there goes my mouse. I gotta, wrong with the I gotta boost up and save Falco. Use the boost to take. Come on, there it is. I guess I should be thankful. I guess I should be thankful. All right. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Boom. Oh, I missed those guys. All right, let's see if I can get to the secret um secret base. I gotta make it through all of these things right here. Let's right, see if I can do some fancy flying. Pretty smooth flying, Fox. Uh, it's terrible flying. Don't lie, Falco. All right. Follow me, Fox. Follow me, Fox. We found a true enemy. Falco, where you going? Uh, where are you going? I found the target. Try to keep up. I found the target. Try to keep up. This game is so much fun. This is really taking me back to, <laughs> you know, funny story about Nintendo 64. Um, I never actually owned one myself, but I played a ton of games, and the reason was that um, I had a neighbor that had one. And uh, I would go to this house all the time and I would just play 64 or I had my cousin that had Nintendo 64 and I would just, I would like, uh, like, what is it called? Like I would um, just leech off of other people or just, um, Incoming enemy from the rear. Uh, I forget oh, what the word is where like, I'm, I'm pretty much just, 
like going to people's house the, oh, is it a oh, i forget what it's called but like when you just leech off of other people right i would just go to other people's houses or my cousin's house and just play uh their nintendo 64 even though i've never owned one so i played a lot of star fox 64 played a lot of golden eye oh man i lost the wing that's why i'm like all funky right now i don't know if i can even kill this guy come on come on aim for the open spot this is really this is really sad that I, I'm I'm this bad at the game. It's me trying to like play and talk at the same time. Come on, guy. Go 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 go. I need my double lasers. I need my double lasers. Come on, double lasers. I right, got one. Let's do one more. Who are you guys? We're Star Fox. So yeah, my Nintendo 64 day memories are good, but I've never owned one. So that's just pretty crazy to me that I, I, I remember playing so much of these games. All right, there we go. Boom. Uh, my finger is getting tired from pressing it. <laughs> That's one of the things about the GRS yoke too, is that this this button is like a clicking trigger. And um, yeah, it's it gets my hand tired if I'm like just pressing it over and over again. So yeah, that's that's my sleeper hit. Star Fox 64 on a yoke. Try it. It's pretty fun. All right. All right. I'm trying to get caught up with, with chat too. Uh, Road Blasters is cool. Ooh, you like to see a Salient Hill cab. Uh, love it, name cheat for Max Fuel, quarter vacuum, cool. I like to see a Silent Hill cab. Yeah, Silent Hill's a good game. National Owner's Day was a big one for at games and pre-orders. Good, good, good. I agree. I, I ordered my first at games products. So Bobby Vu has, uh, you know, been a good supporter of at games and stuff. I, I never bought an ALU, but he gave me, um, um, you know, we did a little trade and I got his Legends Ultimate like control panel and this TV because he had modded his into a Streets of Rage 2 and did something or Streets of Rage 4 and did something else with it. Um, so I, then I placed my first art order. So on, on At Games National Owners Day, I got pinball, I bought the Tetris Mini, I bought the BitPixel and the controller for the pinball. So pretty excited about that. Hopefully that's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm excited the direction that at games is doing, you know, I've been a huge arcade one up supporter and, uh, I, I still love their cabs, but the way I think the features are really starting to sell me on at game stuff. So, you know, checking out the online functionality, the leaderboard settings, the only thing that at games, like the, in terms of like arcade net and that feature is that I think that the market is still very small for the that group. And so I think I've heard the issues about there's not a lot of people that are online playing yet. So I don't know that for sure because I don't have it set up where I can join people playing online. But, you know, the online play like using Fightcade or the, the Marvel versus Capcom experience has always been really great. So I really like the online play experience. Um, Tony, you're right. They got me buying 102 Zakaria tables. <laughs> it won't be arrived for months after. Worth it. Yeah, I didn't buy any of those tables yet. Uh, and Bill Wright says, I love Star Fox 64. Can't wait for the commission. Yes, it was a good one. Arcade went up. Battle Zone with the Periscope. George. Ooh, dual stick mods, right? Battle Zone would be awesome. I have Battle Zone on here. Maybe I'll do some Battle Zone. Snag that kid's computer. Legit smooch. Holding out on Silver Hope that Nintendo will release in N64 Mini. That's a. I would buy a Nintendo 64 Mini, honestly. Yeah, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for it if it included the following games. So, I mean, my top N64 games, um, obviously Star Fox 64. It had to be GoldenEye and um, Mario. I mean, it would be, I mean, there's so many good, like, first-gen games on there, but what was another, oh, um, I played a lot of Perfect Dark, too, when I got GoldenEye down, and then, uh, you know, the part Perfect Dark version of that was really awesome, so I would love to see Perfect Dark on that. Um, what else was really good on Nintendo 64? Um, I didn't play a lot of the Legend of Zelda games because I didn't, I didn't own it, so I couldn't play games that my friends didn't have. <laughs> um, I was a really big Wave Race 64 fan, too, when it came out. But yeah, like I would, I would love a Nintendo 64 Mini. It has to have four ports though, and has to be able to play four players. So that's that's the key. That would that would be the key. Zelda, 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 Zelda. Yeah, that would be good. Bought a National Owners Day. <laughs> all you bought it all. Uh, Tony bought everything on National Owners Day. They should have just called it buy it all. 
um, it might be a great seller for one up and need to need Zelda and want a Pi 4 image with just N64 and Game Dreamcast. It's out there. You can find them for sure. All right, let's jump back into my playlist and I probably will go for another 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, drop my mouse. Okay. All right. Now that we're on the Star Fox playlist, I want to almost like finish the Star Fox playlist, but I want to go, I want to finish the ride and roll one. So I finish here. We're on Simpsons Road Rage. If you guys have never heard of this game, this is pretty much Crazy Taxi, but uh, you're playing as Homer Simpson. So this is pretty cool. Let's check it out. Check it out. Make sure it's running and working. <clears throat> At least my internet's working now, guys. For folks that are just joining the stream, I spent the first 45 minutes of this stream just trying to get my internet working. <laughs> it, was, it was really sad. Um, so I'm glad that we finally were able to do a little bit of gameplay. That would have been sad at the entire stream that I was not able to get it up and running. And uh, yeah, that would have been terrible. Oh, I could have I could have picked Bart as a driver. Oh, dang, I should have gone back and checked it out. That was cool. I haven't played as all the other characters, um, but this is fun. It's like Crazy Taxi again for, for Simpsons style. You can do so many things with the yoke. It's like the best controller. If there's one arcade controller you want to rule them all, you should get a Star Wars yoke. You can play Street Fighter with a Star Wars yoke. It's not great, but you can do it. No, I'm just kidding. Don't play Street Fighter with a Star Wars yoke. But I think I think Greg's daughter did it. I think that was pretty fun. Uh, all right. Is that? Oh, this is the break button. Okay. Stop and pick someone up. All right. I gotta. I, it's one of those things when you play a multi cade Like every time you play, you have to kind of get used to what your controls are, right? All right, all right. Let's go backwards. All right, Mayor Quimby, we're going to the burlesque house. Can you please take for an important meeting? That's funny. Oh my goodness, I love Simpsons. Mayor Quimby is going to the burlesque house. It's great. That was a superb trip. That was a superb trip. Willie Shack. I'm going to Willie Shack. I gotta play this game more. It's actually pretty fun. The controls aren't like I have this like button over here set as my reverse button. So the problem with the console emulators is that you have to share your controller mapping across all the games. And so for all the Nintendo 64 games, some of them, or the, I think this is a GameCube, but it's running Dolphin emulator. Like I have to share the controls and that's why like they're not optimized for certain things or certain games. Get out of my way, jerk ass. Oh goodness, get out of my way, jerk ass. All right, there we go. Average, one second. All right, that was fun. Okay, that was Simpsons Road Rage. Going strong now, yes. If A one up ever does a Simpsons, <laughs> Cav need to have Road Rage also. I wouldn't know about that. They're like you know, it took a while for um, for Simpsons to come out with really good games, right? Like growing up, like the Simpsons arcade game was by far the most popular. But every like console version of a Simpsons game, I remember playing Virtual Bart, and they absolutely like sucked. Um, so I don't know what they would pair a lot of the Simpsons stuff with it. And again, like would I put a racing game? on like a game that's like a beat em up like i don't know even though it's the same property that would be that would be weird for me but um yeah i wonder what i i really wonder what they would pair the simpsons cab with that would be interesting to kind of note like i would have hoped that yeah if it's the same property or yeah i'm i'm really curious what they would do it did have to be more beat em ups for sure and be able to use the controls this is another one of those games that like is a sleeper hit for me playing with the yoke and people are like like super monkey ball i played a lot of super monkey ball but the the analog controls with the yoke controlling your monkey ball is really fun this is another one this is another fun like sleeper hit check this out so like you can control your yoke and then to control the 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 monkey using the yoke and you just have to get through the thing i remember playing this with like a controller it being really hard okay so this is sorry the, the thing was glitching that's why it, it stopped me oh that was really bad <laughs> this is actually really fun here all right 
two, one, go. I controlling a monkey ball with the yoke. Come on, get in there, get in there, get in there. Go. Yeah. Tony, don't lose faith. It's all it's all our our retro arcade kind of nostalgia is keeping us in this, whether it's arcade one up, ALU, you know, MVSX, it's all kind of feeding the same hobby. Um, so I'm I'm not like a diehard like any any particular company. I, I A one up is probably the one that got me most into it. But you know I'm I'm really open to whatever can bring the best experience to us, even if that's modding your own cabs too. So don't lose faith. Just you know be happy and and, and get what really appeals to you. So I'm hoping hoping more folks will enjoy what they have. And I need to do that more honestly. I spend more time tinkering and messing with my cabs and actually playing them. Brian says, I think the biggest issue with the Simpsons cab would be pairing something with it. Nothing fits well, and nobody wants a cab with only one or two games on it. Um, you know, that's that's a really good point. Like, uh, you know, they already have some of the big heavy hater four-player games that you would want to put on something like a beat-em-up cab, right? Like, you already have the TMNT cab. You have the X-Men version of the cab. Like, X-Men, Simpsons, TMNT, like, those are the go-to four-player games right and they've already done that so they have a dedicated cap for each one of those already so um yeah i don't know what they would put on it even battle toads like three player like beat em ups what if they did streets of rage wouldn't that be fun but i know those are different properties i'm trying to think of like popular beat em ups that they can add with it that would be really fun hey what's going on man big hood toy box zane hope i hope you're enjoying he was a previous client of mine all right let's get into top skater this is model 2 emulator Model 2 is always funky, so I have to do it this way to get the game loaded. Top Skater. Again, this is a funky playlist because you can play all sorts of things. All right, configure controls. Um, up, this is going to be down. And then... Three, hmm. That was uh, four, six, three, four. Oh, so this was four, six, three, five, six. Okay, let's try this setup. I forget that um, model two is using one, two, three, four, five, six instead of a zero. So my button number was off. All right, let's try this out, full screen. Switch to full screen. All right. I won so many months of arcade now on Nod. <laughs> January 23rd. You know, I, 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 bought, I bought so much stuff that I got a free month. So can you just keep renewing every single different code that you get so that you really keep going? Or did, like, did you, or can you stack them is what I'm questioning? I, I, have to, I have to figure that out. That would be really cool to figure out. All right, top skater. I want A1 caps to cheap enough so I can mod them. That's true. They they are getting expensive to, if you buy it with the intent to mod it. It's kind of like me. I'm like I'm buying full size, full cost, full price cabs like Outrun, and I'm like completely gutting it, which isn't like smart at all. All right. Oh, uh, here's why I did it. Okay. Oh, so, all right. So that's jump. This is jump. Yeah. This game's actually pretty fun the way I have it set up. So my bottom triggers are moving left and right as I'm going. And then this top right trigger is a jump button. So again, this is one of those controls. Where it's like, you didn't think it would be cool to play on a yoke. But if you're playing Paperboy and you have a skate, if you have a bike, why not have a skateboard too? This is actually pretty cool. Boom. It's not as cool as like actually being in the arcade like using a real skateboard though. Those games are really fun. I always gravitated to those types of games where it was like about the immersive experience and just like sitting down on a controller. So I definitely missed those. That's why I was a big DDR fan. Oh my goodness. I saw somebody do a DDR mad on the RK one up modding group. And it really got me excited about wanting to try to do my own DDR mod, but I have like zero space. But that was one of the games where there was an arcade with a DDR machine. You can guarantee I would put money in it to play. And I was I was really also into a lot of those music games. So like I, I have I really like Guitar Hero. 
Um, I really like Beat Mania. So yeah, I need to I need to get more of those in my Akari too. That was that was me, child of the nineties. I was a nineties kid, so that was when a lot of those rhythm stuff, late nineties games were come out. All right, that's cool. That was a fun game, Top Skater. All right. So let's close that. That was Top Skater. Ooh, we get to play some Wave Race 64. I mentioned it earlier. All right. Dead or Alive 2 is a fun fighter. I agree. Are you really playing Dead or Alive for the fightingness or for the, the eye candy? For the waifus, that is Kasumi. Do I have my Kasumi? Here, you want to see my Kasumi? I still have this. I've barely ever played the game, but I still have this figure because she's she was one of my video game waifus. I needed I think I need to get Mrs. Kong's or us a Kasumi outfit. What do you guys think? <laughs> I even have like a little miniature version of her. Man, this is such a good figure. I think this is like um there's a, a, a line of figures called Bomies. And they did a Dead or Alive line. I'm gonna have Kasumi here next to me. <laughs> Dead or Alive Volleyball is for the eye candy. <laughs> this is true. I think I've only played the Dead or Alive Volleyball one. All right. All right. That's cool. Uh, put all the all your codes. Oh, if you put all your codes in, they stick. Stack. Oh, for Arcade Net. If you activate the access to all the pin cells. So put in all the codes. Oh, nice. All right, cool. So every single code that you put, it will stack. Man, okay, I will do that. I need to get in there and start adding in my arcade net stuff so I can test it out. Cool. I want title titles on an IR arcade. Zookeeper. Ooh, that sounds fun. I haven't heard of it. I need to check that out. Okay. Warm up race. Wave race 64. Should be a fun game. Welcome. 90s arcades or B's jam. Yes. All things 90s are my jam, actually. I, I feel like 19. 99 was the best year for music. Fight me. <laughs> it was the year of of uh, I was I was I was big into um uh, the boy band era and the pop era, but you also had really good um um hip hop R and B stuff that came out that year too. It's really good. I, I had a wide breadth of music, but uh, I remember 1999 being a really good year. Oh my goodness. I'm really bad. Where am I going? Am I just casually Oh, I think I think in this version I'm not actually like racing. I'm just kind of like doing tricks and stuff. I remember when Nintendo 64 first came out and they like showed this game with the graphics of the waves and they're like, "Look how realistic the waves look." And we spent so much time with the way that the waves and the the architecture works. This is the most advanced technology. And at the time, I was blown away, and it just it cra it's crazy how how fast video game graphics. I know that I mean everybody's like, oh yeah, graphics always change, but I remember the article about the water in Wave Race sixty four being like the most advanced thing ever made. And I look at it, and it's like, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, the dolphin, yeah, the dolphins too. He just driving, chilling. This made me want to be like. Just made me want to like ride ride jet skis in real life but um these always terrified me i actually used to ride wave runners but not jet skis so i had i used to go to a lake with some family and we would ride like a water um what you call it yeah wave runners instead of jet skis so yeah boom all right that's fun i like the plays this game was so fun. N64 gameplay was really good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this this was a really fun game back in the day. I liked it a lot. And then the sequel. I never played the sequel much because this came out on a GameCube. But this is Wave Race uh, Blue Storm. Let's check this out. All right. All right. Uh, titles on At Games Legends are so dope. They have a bigger library. I'll give you that much in terms of the stock games. But I'm going to be putting CoinOps X on mine soon. I need to do that. I haven't done it yet. All right, let's play Wave Race Blue Storm. Um, Dead or Alive has the hottest fibers. Stack them all now. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, George. Appreciate you being here. 
hanging out. All right. Says, I remember going to the arcades and everyone playing fighters in the arcades in the 90s, especially Capcom games. Yep. I had my quarter on the arcades often playing Street Fighters, what? playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, right when the light I was... I was a big baby in the arcades, though. Like, I was very emotional arcade player when I was playing arcades. And um, I would have, like, the neighborhood kids, like, after school would, um, like, that's when my, my, my video store would be the most popular was when right after school, people got out of school and they had some time to kill. And so our video store was right next to a middle school. They would come over and I'd have all this competition of people coming to play games. And I always thought I was good because, I mean, obviously I, I worked at my parents' video shop and was able to play. But then when I would lose games, I would get so emotional. And then people would call me crybaby. And I, I would like go back and like cry for a little bit. And then I'd come back with my quarter, like my little black mark quarter so I can get it back from my operator. And then I'd come back in there and just get my ass whooped again. So, I mean, the only way to get better at fighting games is to get your ass whooped and learn and keep going at it. So. Uh, I think that's hard for a teenager, a little kid playing <laughs> to, to really play. I think my son has that same emotion. My son plays games and he's such an emotional gamer. Like I, he even cries when he loses to the computer. Like I haven't played Marvel versus Capcom and like he's trying to play Onslaught. And then he's like, why is this guy so hard? Ah! It's like raging, smashing the buttons. Like, and I'm just laughing and I'm like, that was me. And like, I can't get mad at him for being an emotional gamer because I gave him that trait. But it's, it's just funny to relive those days. And my daughter is like, it's funny. She's like way more like emotional um in terms of being just like a punk <laughs> but she loves marvel versus capcom we actually play every night together she sits on my lap while i play in the danger room against other people and she just loves like she 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 plays by herself and she's like i like morgan and Mega Man, and um i'm fighting them and daddy i need help and so but she plays on easy mode and she butt matches with the best of them so she actually almost almost beat my son on a like a real head-to-head -head match um and i'm totally in eighth place on this game this is a really terrible run but man the graphics got way better on the gamecube version so this is actually pretty fun too okay cool so let's exit out of that that's wave risk oh and then the last game that i have on here is wave runner so we have three wave race games a water ski game a sega ski game ski champ so i have two skiing games uh, you know, four water ski games, a skateboarding game, Paperboy, motorcycle game. It's pretty cool. And um, and so the reason why these aren't on like racing games, because like in these games, you're, I mean, some of them are like Crazy Taxi. I mean, would you consider Crazy Taxi like a racing game? It's a driving game, right? So you can't put it, it's not a racing game per se. It's just a driving game. So that's why I have this. It's called Ride and Roll as my playlist. All right, Wave Runner is a Model 2 game. All right. I had no naked mod on my original modified. <laughs> you had the no naked mod on your modified original Xbox for DOA volleyball. Oh my goodness, Kasumi. No, no. <laughs> That's funny. I might have to do some, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, private browsing searching later to see, see more about that. But thanks for uh, putting that thought in my head for the rest of the day now, Brad. Thanks. I may have to go wake up Mrs. Kong's arrest now have some uh, and say hello to the morning. All right, controls, configures. Okay. Oh, I didn't launch the game first. So for some model two to, to actually map a game, you have to launch it first and then you can map the game. So wave racer, where are you? I hate how it's not in alphabetical order. So this will probably be the last game that I test out just so that this game is, is pretty much that a oh, wave runner. There it is. Okay. This will be the last game and then we'll call it a night or a morning. Oh my God. I feel like I'm about to go to sleep, but I've been up all day. So three, five, six, left, right view, that button, start coin. All right, here we go. Video auto switch to full screen. Okay. It's funny. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Capcom SNK were really bit at your local arcade. Yeah, Marvel MBC 2. I can't wait if if our cable nut does the MBC 2 cab. I know they were kind of saying they would wait till next year. It would be really good. 
in the 90s take a beating and eventually give a beating <laughs> yes brad don't be sorry it's okay i'll be thinking about dead or alive volleyball all day now i appreciate it yeah. don't don't apologize it's good yeah. insert more coins wave runner are you ready Three. two one Go. this one all right that's so even though Wave Race 64 and those other games are cool, like when you're playing an arcade game, I'd rather be playing something like this. So like Wave Runner on the arcade over like Wave Race 64 and Wave Race Blue Wave. Like this is playing an arcade and it's just like a quick in and out. Like the controls are so smooth on this. This is a Sega Model 2 emulator. But look, like you're playing this on a yoke. It almost feels like you are you could be using a yoke on, on like... um. Uh, in the arcade right like this the steering wheel setup it almost feels like that too so this feels very natural this is a really good game i forget about some of these games sometimes and i'm like wow this is a really fun game to play wave runner a sega model 2 good stuff the controls are so smooth so good with this boom This is what I want in a game where you can just get in and out, feel like the controls are good and responsive, and feel like you have a chance, even though I'm in seventh place right now. I'm sure there's better ways to actually play the game itself. Room. Final lap. All right, we'll do one more lap, and then we'll call it a day. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Actually, I'm probably going to stop right now because I don't have a chance to catch up. I'm... I, I need to go. All right. Thanks, Brad, for hanging out. I know folks are been here with me for about the last hour and a half. I appreciate everybody that was joining in. So I just spent all day, an hour and a half, and I only got to do like, what, one, two, three, four, five, 15 games in an hour and a half. My, I have a lot more to go. So if I have more time, I'll probably do this again, uh, maybe tomorrow morning or later today, just to continue working, chatting with folks. And uh, appreciate everybody that was joining. Have a great day rest of your day if you're on the west coast have a great morning if you're on the east coast or anywhere in between have a great afternoon if you're across the world i had mark from australia joining me good evening enjoy the rest of your day guys talk to you guys later bye